Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. I praise the Lord for the opportunity, amen. It's wet and nasty again outside, but it seems like we live in the rainforest, amen, anymore. Uh, like, like we didn't need some more water, amen. Uh, but I praise God uh, for uh, the rain. I praise God there's a reason, there's a, something going on uh, that you know, we don't understand all of uh, the things that God has uh, going on. I'm getting a little ring. I was on right here, but we're all right now, Amen. Uh, but God, He has a perfect plan. Amen. He knows uh, He's always up to something, whether or not uh, we realize it or not. Uh, God is always up to something. Uh, I just praise God tonight for the opportunity to be here. Amen. And, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight. If I can find my spot. I know where I'm supposed to be. Amen. Talking about, amen, what God has... Uh, in, going on in our in our lives and and the time that which we live, and I thank God that that where we live right now, Amen, is a special time, Amen, to be alive. There's a lot of things that are going on uh, in the world right now uh, that if we just look around, Amen, that we can see that the hand of God, Amen, is at work uh, all around us. Uh, there was I don't know if any, all of any of you, of you know that there was a law passed today uh, for in New York that. Uh, abortion for for uh, children all the way up to being born is now legalized in the state of New York. Uh, but God, you know, He hears those innocent cries from the ground. Amen. He hears those uh, those those cries, and uh, you know, we live in a in a very very dark dark time. Uh, so it's best for us that we always stay prepared and and stay and be on guard. Amen. In our life, we never know. Amen. What's going on at any given time? But God, He has a perfect plan. God is up to something. Amen. I know that He is uh, because I feel it in my spirit, the way the things that God is uh, speaking to me about. And uh, one thing that He talked to me today about, you know, uh, the other day I heard that somebody said that, uh, you know, it seems like uh, we had all four seasons in a matter of two days. A couple of weeks back, you know, it was like it was like 70 degrees, and then all of a sudden it, it, it turned kind of fall, like 50, 40 degrees, and the next thing you know, uh, it's all the way down, and then we're 19 degrees Monday morning, you know. It's kind of like we had all four seasons, and God said there's a season for everything, just like there is a time uh, for everything. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, amen? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, that you've given us uh, tonight, God, to come and be in your house, Father, to worship and to praise you, God. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, God. And God, this time of fellowship that you've given us one with another, God, to, to meet together uh, with our, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, God, tonight. Uh, God, in this place of worship, Father, we thank you for our young people, God. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for the excitement, God, when we sing about home, God. Uh, Father, the place that we're headed, God, uh, that you've prepared for us, God, that you've laid up for us, that, God, that's waiting on us, Father, today of your return, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, God. And we pray, God, that you continue to pour your love and, God, your spirit out upon us, God, in this place, Father. Continue, God, to work that you've, God, begun in our, in our midst, Father. We thank you, Lord, tonight, God, for this, this group of, this praise team that you've, uh, God, that you've, uh, set in this place to, to, to sing your praise, God, and your worship, God. And we thank you for this body of believers, God, that you would bless them. God, touch their hearts, God, tonight. And we give you the praise and the glory for all things. And the people of God said, Amen. So God began to speak to me about a season and, and, you know, and season has to do with a, a period of time. And period of time, you know, you have a uh, set aside that, that spring is, uh, from, uh, generally from like March to, uh, or from, yeah, from probably about, uh, April, March, April, May, usually springtime, June, July, August, maybe I'm a month behind, uh, maybe it's more like, uh, March, uh, maybe April, May, June, and then July, August, September's kind of, then fall starts to fall. So there's a set point of time seeing uh, God's calendar 
chapter, amen, in our life, uh, there are seasons and there are times for everything, amen. And now is for a time of rejoicing because uh, it's not a time for sadness, amen, but a time of rejoicing in our life because He is our soon coming King and if we are saved and we believe that and we are the children of God, amen, then we should be rejoicing, amen, because we have no reason to be sad. We have no reason to worry. We have no reason to fear. But uh, the devil, he feeds off those uh, other uh, things, that the, those other aspects of our life, the fear. Amen. He, he likes to instill fear in us to, to try to, uh, to scare us off and try to hinder us from doing the, the work of God. He, he likes to, to put doubt. He likes to sow unbelief in our life uh, to try to discourage us from, from coming to the house of God or for, from going where God would have us to go. But I know that God has a time. Amen. He said, and now is the time. It's high time uh, that His church uh, not be sad, but rejoice in His coming. Amen? But rejoice in His coming. Because He's coming. He is the soon coming King. Amen? Michael, we're driving down the road today. He said, Dad, what's the K in K-love mean? I said, it's the King's love. And there ain't nothing matches the King's love, amen, that He has for us. Amen. So it's our time to rejoice, not to be sad, not to be... You know, we want to see all the negative things. If you're watching the news, stop. There ain't nothing on there but terrible, but sadness and, and just uh, this and that. And just everything's just bleh. We don't have time for that. The church should be rejoicing. The church should be excited. You and I should be awake. Amen. You and I should be looking. You and I uh, should be smiling, not frowning. Amen. You and I uh, should have our hands raised. Amen. You and I uh, should be worshiping God. Amen. You and I uh, should rejoice in this time that we live. And he led me to a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Amen. Or under heaven, under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. It says in verse 5, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He said there's a time for everything. There's a time, a time... But what can we do with time? He says there are some major things that can be found in time. He said, and one thing that can be found in time is truth. Truth can be found if we take time. And we find truth. And what's the Bible say about truth? He said, a man that finds a truth, he said, the truth, it will not set you free, but it will make you free. Amen. The truth, it will set you free. And a man that's been set free has been made free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. So we have been set free by the truth. The truth is, is that there is a hell and there is a heaven. The truth is that there is a devil and there is a God. Amen. There is a truth that the devil is a deceiver. Amen. And that God loves your soul. The truth is, is that if you don't live a holy life, You're not going to enter into the gates of heaven. He said that the straight is the way and narrow is the gate and few there be that find it. Amen? And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Amen? So truth can be found in time. We spend time with God. You see a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of things on on Facebook and things like that about people that are taking, you know, they, they had a picture of a little boy that had a boot. And it was like right here at his head and he was grimacing. Well, when they backed the picture up, it was the little boy holding the boot himself. It was perception. People perceive things. He said in the last days, he said they'll call evil good and good evil. It's a perception of things. What, What we want to see as the men and women of God, we need to see that God is still alive. 
Amen? And that God is still in control. And that God still has a plan. And it will go forward. Amen? Until completion. The devil, he can't do anything to stop it. All he can do is try to drag as many people as he can with him. He can't stop it. There is no stopping God, Bill. There is no stopping him. Man may try, they can pass laws, they can rewrite bills, they can change this, they can change that. They will not stop the plan in which God hath put forth. From the beginning of time, they will not stop it. It's been going. I mean, it's like, man, you can see it all the way from the fall of Adam. Adam, he, he lost it in the garden. He lost it in the garden. There was a gulf fixed between man and God for years. And then the Savior came. And then Jesus came. And that veil that was torn, amen, that was torn uh, in resemblance that was God. That was Jesus taking back the birthright, amen, that Adam had lost in the garden. You can see it unfolding, amen. You can see it if you'll look and you'll, you'll find truth if you'll spend time with Him. <clears throat> Intimacy. We have to be intimate with God. We, we can't keep secrets from God. You won't keep secrets from God. He knows everything. You may try. You may keep secrets from me. I don't know your life. Amen. All I do is I see you here and I pray that God is uh, doing you, that, that God is doing a great work in your life and I pray that uh, you're, you're uh, you know, receptive to, to God in your life and you're listening to Him when you're driving up and down the highway, when you're moving in and out, when you're doing this or that. I hope that you're really attentive to what God has going on around you. Because if you're not, amen, you're missing it. Amen, intimate with God. Being intimate with God. He knows everything about my deepest, darkest thoughts. God knows those things. He knows our our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows our thoughts. We have to be intimate with God. We have to be intimate with Him. That way, you know, we we, we can be relaxed. There's a lot of people, I think, when they come to the house of God, you can tell, though, they're nervous. Like they've had their hand in the cookie jar and somebody's been caught. You know, like walking in on a kid, had a buddy tell me today, he said he walked in on his son one time, he said he heard a rustling noise. He said he walked in there. He said he walked in the kitchen, he didn't see nothing. He said he turned around and he walked back through the house and looked kind of behind the chair, heard a rustling noise again, looked kind of behind the recliner, and there said his five-year-old boy with a bag full of Oreos. And that bag was rattling, he was shoving them in as quick as he could get them in. But when he got caught, well, I didn't do that. Well, well I, I, I didn't know. There's so many Christians in the house of God, they, they, can't come, they don't come to the house of God because they're, they're, they're living a double life. They're, they're in one day and out the next. Amen. They, 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 they don't have any kind of commitment in their life. They're just tossed about like the wind blows them around. Committed. We, we have to have intimacy with God. When we come to the house of God, we shouldn't come to the house of God and say, well, well I'll just sit right over here. You see people like that all the time. They come in blowing and going, raising their hands, shouting. The next time they come to the house of God, they're just sitting back there. Well, I'm just waiting on it. Don't look at me, preacher. I ain't been doing nothing. Why, why are you staring at me? Sound like some of you know some people like that. Maybe you've been one. I've been one of them people. Sit right there in the pew, not living my life right in the church. The preacher be up there preaching him, just dancing on the tops of my toes. Me getting mad. But I wasn't living my life the way I was supposed to be. And God was trying to correct me. God will try to correct you and steer you back to that straight and narrow path. Hey man, it's easy to walk on the Broadway. It's easy to walk on the Broadway. Hey Amen. It's hard to walk the straight and narrow. You're not going to be liked on the straight and narrow. Everybody's not going to speak well of you on the straight and narrow. Everybody's not going to want to hang out with you on the straight and narrow. Everybody's going to think that you're, you know, weak or you're puny. Hey man, on the straight and narrow. Oh, you're just a goody two-shoes, ain't you? You just, you just think you're better than me. I don't think I'm better than you. I just want to make it to heaven. <laughs> I know what I'm after. Hey man, and ain't the devil in hell going to deter me from getting to that goal. I, I'm going to keep walking it. I'm going to keep walking it. No matter what people say, no matter what people do, I'm going to keep walking it. You may not like me, but that's okay. Amen. That's not going to separate me from the love of God. Amen. That, that can't pry me away from the love of God. And I'm okay with that, but we have to be intimate with God. My wife, I can sit down and talk to her about anything. And I can do the same thing with God. I don't have any secrets with God. Amen. Just like I don't have any secrets with my wife. I don't, I don't have any secrets with her. 
She don't have any secrets with me that I know of, Bill. Just giving her a hard time. She's not in here. I can do that. But I don't have any, you know, I don't, uh, all these people.